the best a man can get. Back here, first things first, Super Bowl champ Chris Caney here to help us break everything down. Did you enjoy the weekend? I enjoyed the weekend. I did not enjoy that cold weather this morning. When no, no. you wake up this and you step outside this single digits. It was brutal. I don't care how long you've been in a cold weather uh, city. You never get used to single uh, digits. My dormant. By the way, it's uh, minus two. I was like, thanks. Enjoy staying indoors at 3 a.m. as I'm walking <laughs> out the door to work. But uh, great weekend, though. Great of weekend. Football. Great games yesterday. Let's start with the AFC game. Chiefs hosting the Patriots. Come on, my show complained about the Chiefs weather. I already got somebody complaining about the weather. the game in the second. I did not complain well, until he brought it up. A little Shutter more than two line. minutes to go. Damian Williams runs it in, puts the Chiefs up four. Tom Brady fired up, finding Rob Gronkowski, putting the ball inside the five with less than a minute left. Next play, Rex Burkhead runs it in for the score. Patriots go up three. All right, Chiefs have a chance to tie. Mahomes to Demarcus Robinson, 27-yard gain, and that would put them in range. Harrison Butker, 39 yards out, drills it, and we're going to overtime. Here we go. Third and nine, Tom Brady finds Julian Edelman. And what else is new? 20-yard gain, pats into the red zone. Burkhead will take it down to the five-yard line. Two plays later, Burkhead again scores, and that would be the ball game. Chiefs never touch the ball in overtime. Patriots go on to win 37-31. Tom Brady takes down the presumptive MVP on his way to his ninth Super Bowl. Chris Candy, a lot to take in here. But let's just take a step back. How were the Patriots able to beat the Chiefs last night? Well, the Patriots controlled the complexion of the game. I mean, you saw that the Chiefs were blanked in the first half. That hadn't happened at any point in any game this season. I mean, when you don't allow them to actually have any opportunities to score points in the first half, I think that's probably the most impressive part about the game. But a lot of it had to do with the offensive game plan for the New England Patriots. We saw them come out and do exactly what they did in that game against the Los Angeles Chargers a week before in the divisional round. They ran the football. They used 21 personnel. They went with a lot of different personnel groupings. Yep. But the focus was being able to attack in between the tackles in the run game. When you saw that the Kansas City Chiefs only ran 16 plays on offense for 32 yards in the first half, that, that's, that, that was essentially the game. I mean, and it could have been a lot uglier than that because Tom Brady threw that interception in the red zone. Reggie yes. Ragland had that pick. I mean, it could have been 21-0 at halftime. But, I mean, I think that the Kansas City Chiefs got into a big hole and they weren't able to do enough to climb out of that hole in the second half. Well, I mean, they, they climbed out of it twice. They had two second half leads. that They weren't able to hold on to those leads. This so is the problem. When you get behind in a game like that, you think when the, on the scoreboard you're even, but you're not even mm -hmm. because they have forced their will on your defense. There ain't no subs for that right. defense. It's late in the year. Like when that defense is on the field, that wear and tear will typically pay dividends for the team that has dominated time of possession. So the scoreboard might say, oh, we're tied up. But as players on the field, you know you have a tremendous advantage because you've dominated time of possession. And the defense was clearly gassed by the end. I totally understand that. And the time of possession was the Chiefs had the ball for 21 minutes. The Pats had the ball for 44 minutes because yeah. the overtime part, fact yeah. part of it. But to me, the most impressive part of this game was not what the Patriots did on offense. Because if you would have told me they're going to run on the Chiefs at will, I'd have said that's believable. To me, the most impressive part is what the Patriots did on defense. This was the least productive game of Tyreek Hill's career. First game in his career where he has only one touch and no touchdowns. So, I mean, he had the one catch late in the first half, mm -hmm. and that was it. And then Travis Kelsey had three catches in the game. He had the touchdown, and that was essentially it. They couldn't run the ball. Damian Williams, 10 carries for 30 yards. Like, I know Damian Williams in with three touchdowns, so that part looks good. But aside from Patrick Mahomes doing some really good things to his third and fourth options, the Patriots defense played its ideal game plan, and that to me is what was most impressive. The ability to take out Hill and Kelsey, both from the football game. Well, I'm gonna say, from an offensive standpoint, this is what New England did. Because you're talking about the inability for Kansas City to get the ball to their weapons. Well, on the other side, New England got the ball to their weapons. Yep. Sony Michelle, 29 carries. James White in the first half utilized him 12 plays. He gets six 
first down. So mm -hmm. you got to give credit to the people that know how to, because coming into the game plan, you got to stop Gronk. Yep. You got to stop yep. Edelman. Oh, okay, well, let's see how they did. Edelman targeted 10 times, seven catches. Gronk, 11 targets, six. So you got to give credit to the people that systematically get the ball to their players compared to, I thought it was more New England's defense, I mean offense, that put the defense in position that they could make Kansas City play left-handed because they were on the field so long. Yeah, exactly. That's the whole point, right? You want to limit the opportunities that Pat Mahomes has to get the ball to those players because, again, there's only so long that you're going to be able to hold that Kansas City Chiefs offense down, and you saw that in the fourth quarter. They put up 24 points in the fourth quarter, so it was ultimately about the offense playing complementary football and limiting the opportunities that Pat Mahomes had to bring his team back in the game. But, I mean, there aren't any good answers to try to, to, try to neutralize Pat Mahomes and what that Kansas City Chiefs offense can do, but the best next thing you can do is try to limit the opportunities that he has to exploit your defense. Now, you got to give credit where credit is due. I thought the secondary did a great job of disguising the coverages pre-snap. They played a lot of man coverages, man free. They double teamed Tyreek Hill. They kept the safety high this time rather than trying to run true bracket yeah, in coverage. In the first game, week number six, they played an in and out coverage where they mm -hmm. were out to the left and out to the right. The safety was coming down and with that speed, he ran through that coverage. What they did was kept the safety high at all times and the underneath coverage took away all the short and intermediates. A brilliant game plan by Belichick. And one of the reasons they weren't able to adjust and they weren't able to maybe have Tyreek Hill get the ball in more intermediate stuff, they're taking away the short and the long, is because Patrick Mahomes was under constant duress. Brady was pressured on 10% of his dropbacks, only hit one time. Well, he was hit twice, but one of them they said was roughing the passer somehow. So he only hit one time in the stat sheet. Mahomes was on his back throughout the game, mm -hmm. pressured on 45% of his dropbacks, so he didn't have time. Like, I thought what the Patriots did defensively was brilliant. To, what the, to these guys' points, they started the game with a 15-play, eight-plus-minute drive to establish what they were trying to do, and they ended the game with a 13-play drive in overtime to make sure that Patrick Mahomes was not going to step on the field again. And despite being under duress, Patrick Mahomes had a much better night than Tom Brady had, Chris. Well, he had a much better night from the stat sheet's point of view, but, I mean, they couldn't get the offense going early, and one of the things that Nick and I had always talked about is the games that the Chiefs have lost this season, Pat Mahomes has gotten out to a slow start. The Patriots did that again, but that's in large part, too, what their offense is capable of doing. Mm -hmm. Bill Parcells used to always have a formula for his offense, and in order to call it a good outing, his offense needed to have 50 plus runs and completions. So if you total mm -hmm. that number, it would be 50 or more. Well, the Patriots had 78 runs yeah. plus completions. Wow. They doubled up on the yeah. Kansas City Chiefs. They ran 94 plays, the Chiefs ran 47. I mean, you limited the opportunity. So for as much as people have been making about the, the New England Patriots defense not being as talented, mm -hmm. well, if you're not on the field, if you only have to defend the Chiefs offense for 47 plays, we're going to give ourselves a pretty they, good chance to sure. keep that number one scoring offense yep. down. And that's exactly why. They didn't have to do much. The Chiefs averaged 35 points. They held them to 31. Tom Brady made that enough to be able to put a win in the, in the stat column and go to the Super Bowl. They doubled them up in almost everything except for the scoreboard. They doubled up in time possession, first downs, yards. They quadrupled them in rushing yards. It was on the stat sheet, it looks like it was a Patriots blowout instead of a Patriots overtime. All right, it'll be the Patriots and the Rams again. Chris, stick around. Coming up, did the referees cost the Saints a shot at